Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video and you catch me again in a field of oilseed rape, which is where I started the previous video two weeks ago. And I just want to show you how much this crop has enjoyed this current extraordinary warm weather. Also in this video, I'm going to show you uh, we've been weeding the um, barley out there with a hoe rather than using chemicals. All in the news at the moment is this price of fertiliser and you know the mainstream media seem to have got hold of this and whether food security is going to be an issue going forward. I'm sure it is, I'll say that now, but I'll explain the detail and explain the difference of fertiliser, why we use fertiliser, why we can't sort of suddenly swap to full organic and that sort of thing and expect to feed the world. But um, that's for later in the video. First of all, oilseed rape. So it's only two weeks since I was last in here. Now this is just on the cusp of where we had the pigeon damage. So I can see down here this slightly stunted field. If you look at this one here, this is sort of being grazed. The bottom fields have been grazed, so it's slightly behind. And then you find another one yeah, this one's less grazed and it's the flowers are just starting to bud up so you can see that happening it really takes off oilseed rape at this time of year um i'm just looking if we've got a little beetle that sort of comes in at this time there the pollen beetle, that black beetle we'll keep a, an eye on that but we haven't got very effective sprays on it oilseed rape so different to last year i have a crop this year i've got a proper crop it's green from corner to corner in the fields and i say where the kites are i've just that one's just come down they're doing a terrific job and what changed from the last video i put some bangers out so i've had some um, pigeon scares going on and the pigeons have cleared off the rape's taken off we had an inch of rain last um, week and it's warmed up it's about 18 degrees at the moment which is amazing in march so oilseed rape going really well the, we're coming in here just to do a, there's a bit of cleavers i don't know if i can find one find some chickweed can't find there's a little bit of weed and because it sort of really takes off the oilseed rape at this time of year we put a growth regulator on it just so it doesn't get too tall and fall over um, later in the year but at the moment i would like leaf spot i think he's just trying to treat as well but yeah, I can't see any here. Anyway, so obviously rape, all good news at the moment, as is the price for this year, but that's another matter. Now, the barley over there, I want to show you that because we had a big issue. It's probably my worst crop this year is this one over here. Right, well, this is the winter barley and it sort of looks all right as you drive past. But when you get in the field, it's not so good because this year we had an explosion of something called sterile brome, which is a type of grass and you can't take it out of winter barley. I have no idea why it suddenly decided 2022 that the year it's going to appear from almost nowhere. We've always had a little bit, but nothing like we've got this year. And also we had, this field was in wheat last year, and we had a lot of wheat volunteers grow up. So wheat from last year has sprung up in the barley. And when I come to sell this barley, they don't like wheat in it. So, and there's no real way of taking it out because they're very similar sort of plants. So you can't spray wheat out of barley. So what do we do? Well, what we've done, first time I've used it, we used a cultivator or my uh, contractor used a cultivator, which is like a hoe, inter-row hoe. Uh, and it runs down here and it, it basically is weeding between the rows because when you put a, a crop in, it's always in sort of rows like this. So if you go through with a weeder, it's an organic sort of tool you use in organic farming, so you're not using chemicals, you can take weeds out. Now you're obviously not gonna get the weeds that are in the rows itself, but it has cleaned it up. We won't really know until we get to harvest, but you can see here, there, there's some plants that have sort of been weeded out in the row there any more over here yeah there's another one there so well, it was i wouldn't like this job they actually got their um, dad to drive the tractor who i think is in his 70s and uh there's no guidance on it and he has to drive it millimeter perfect because he's looking at the row the cultivator comes along and if he just moves slightly left or right he'll take all my barley out i'm very grateful he's had many years of experience in doing this job and hasn't taken any barley out that i can see but yeah it was really it took a uh, sort of morning to do it's quite a slow job but um, yeah it's the only thing we could do and it does seem to have got quite a lot of the wheat out so i'm pleased to pleased to see there you go 
all that. And now I'm hoping that the barley will really um, get going. It's a hybrid barley. Last year it went wallop in May. And with this sort of weather, we'll put another dressing of uh, fertilizer on it. This should really take off and sort of smother some of the sterile brome out. Some of it, the really bad bit, you might see in the distance there's a yellow patch there. We've put no fertilizer on it, no nothing. We'll just abandon it. So we won't even bother harvesting that area because there's just too much sterile brome. But yeah, most of the field, I think we will actually get a better crop here than I thought um, a few months ago. Well, this is the winter wheat and this is a first wheat, feels called flag slat. Look at it. I've got wheat from one corner to the other. This is what you want wheat to look like at the end of March. And after last year, this is part of the challenge with farming is quite why you keep um, coming back for more punishment year after year, because it's so satisfying when you can turn a field that was, this was a disastrous crop of oilseed rape last year, cost of fortune, weeds just couldn't get it to grow. And the next year, after getting the cultivations right, the drilling dates right, the seasons with you, you end up with a field of wheat that looks like this. It's, it is very addictive to get it right. But this field um, we're just about to go into, this field would love just to grow spring wild oats. Always has, and it's incredibly frustrating. But we've got a spray, we can take them out. If you come down here, where you look for weeds in a field of um, like wheat like this, Stanley's just having a closer look as well. He must, I can't believe he's interested. But this here, these little shoots coming in between the rows tells you that is a weed. And that is a spring oat that appears at this time of year. That's why it's called a spring oat rather than a winter oat, which would have appeared earlier. But we've got a chemical, we can take that out. We just want them to get them a little bit bigger, just check they've all come through the ground and then we'll be coming in here uh, and taking those out. Other things we've done in here, it's had one dressing of nitrogen fertiliser. It will be getting another one probably end of next week sort of time. It's now is the time it grows. We've got to be careful though because you do get weirdness with weather at times like this time of year and, and last year I think we had snow in April I'll, I'll add it to the video if I can find a clip of it it will disappear but yeah you want a proper growing season and the great thing is we had about an inch of rain last week so this is absolutely perfect and again I go back to that challenge that 2020 was that horrendous year when we were, we'd only planted it about two or three weeks ago it was sort of in March uh, and this year we have crops like that. Now I want to just run through some of the madness that's the fallout of the dreadful things happening in Ukraine and the fact that Russia and Ukraine um, um, and Belarus are the major manufacturers of fertiliser and the fertiliser price has gone berserk. And I noticed there was that statement by the Chancellor talking about inflation and talking about a potential 9% uh, rise in vi for peak by the end of this year. That's not what's happening in agriculture. We've gone busted right through 9%. I have never seen prices increase like they have over the last few months. And fertilizer is the one that sort of hit the headlines because of the connection with Russia and Ukraine. And I, th I explained in the last video how the price of fertilizer used to hover around 200 pounds a ton or thereabouts. And we're now getting quotes for, net, for buying it for the next harvest of a thousand pounds. So a five fold increase, 500%, nothing to do with your 9%. And what on earth that is really destabilized what we do in farming because it basically the, the um, maths don't quite add up if you're paying have a sudden increase like that but it's not just fertilizer we've seen diesel i ordered some diesel just to get some in i heard it's going to be a bit tricky because it's connected to the russia the oil we were buying from then provides about at least a third of our diesel in this country so diesel is getting rationed in germany and there's a potential it's going to happen over here i thought oh that doesn't sound so good diesel ah, during lockdown, I think it was about 28p, 2020 or something, dropped right down, 40 something pence last year. I was quoted 138 for diesel, so over 300% increase, but it would be priced on the day of delivery and they wouldn't be able to deliver it for about 10 days. So, so yeah, please have some diesel. It'll be 138, but it might be more. It might be considerable. Just 
if you want some diesel, that's how you trade. Never heard of that, where you don't even know the price of stuff. It's all about supply. Also, glyphosate, we use a lot of glyphosate, fourfold increase in the price of glyphosate. Strangely, fungicides and things haven't gone up that much. I'm hearing about 10% or thereabouts price increase on those. But to grow a field of wheat, um, you have something called the variable cost, which is the fertilizer sprays, um, seed and things like that around 500 pounds a hectare for next year it's over a thousand pounds and why i use nitrogen is there's a very good response curve to that initial dressing of nitrogen on wheat you get your money back from it and it, it, it basically generates a lot of uh, plant growth you'll see in the news they, they sort of talk about phosphates and potash different sort of fertilizer that's base fertilizer that you do a routine dressing the yield comes from this nitrogen and it will double the yield of this field if i didn't put any nitrogen on this field let's call it four tons a hectare if i put nitrogen on i would expect eight ton plus a, he a hectare this isn't a high yielding farm if you're thinking oh you should be getting 10 tons so it increases the yield by four tons that 700 kilos of fertilizer at a thousand pounds a ton is cost me 700 pounds so i need to make more than 700 pounds from my extra four tons a week so i need a price increase of 175 pounds a ton to pay for my super expensive um, fertilizer not going to happen so we're going to bring back the amount of nitrogen to a much lower level we put on the the following crop and that means harvest is going to be lower and that you look at food security because we're not actually producing as much because the prices are so high what's going to happen to the uk harvest and then in the background as michael gove and george unis and his chums saying oh we want um, you to farm for the public good and um, be paid for the public good and go rewilding and put clovers in well there's even less going to be wheat and obviously rape in the ground so food security out the window that as i've mentioned in previous video i was staggered that the uk government's uh, farming policy from defra going forward never mentioned food security all you've got in the news now is food security. You've got Europe reacting and taking fallow fields out to plant a crop and support for their farmers. In the, in the UK, George Unis just the other day announced, oh, you've got to swap um, your nitrogen fertiliser and use organic fertiliser. The numbers of chickens and cattle to supply the amount of nitrogen we need to grow a wheat crop in this, and obviously rape, um, in this country are huge believe it was over half a billion chickens are needed extra chickens are needed to actually um, provide enough nitrogen so we can carry on farming at the same level as we are now don't know how many cattle and this is all the time when we're all going vegan apparently and uh, we don't want the livestock and uh, beef cows are bad well make your mind up George Unis do you want us to have cows on the farm to provide the fertilizer natural fertilizer see the yields of um, all farms cut by probably 30 percent but lots of cows and lots of red meat or do you want to sort out the supply of nitrogen from another way of doing it? Now, there are solutions. He did say from biodigester plants, we might be able to use pelleted product from there, but that's a way off. It's like on a, I've just done a Harry's Garage video on sustainable fuel, which is fuel replacement fuel that's come from a, a biomass waste. It's a decade away, and I see this as a decade away. So I'm watching this space still. I just can't farm like we like this with fertilizer at a thousand pounds there's a real rethink going to happen and for those of you thinking well why won't you just go organic and just don't use synthetic fertilizer at all well as i explained earlier yield would halve and you also need all this extra livestock to produce the organic fertilizers if you like along with using growing clovers etc so we've got a massive increase in livestock on farm massive increase in labor to look after that livestock and half the yield of wheat coming out the other end so it's unsustainable on a world scale us all going organic we need to find a replacement for nitrogen fertilizer to be able to feed the world because if organic you halve the production of wheat a year and we just can't feed everyone as i said in the last video all the balls are up in the air 
and I think it's extremely worrying for food security and the world harvest is going to be way down if these fertiliser prices stay up because the whole world uses nitrogen um, to increase yields to feed the world as we have it and we're sort of in balance at the moment but not at a thousand pounds a ton so I don't want to be too down because I don't I we've got a way to go and if you're wondering why we're talking about it now for harvest 23 well we, you've got to remember in four weeks time I'll put in next year's oilseed rape in and I have to be thinking about what I'm growing and where and I'm making those decisions now even though we won't harvest it until August 2023. That's why it's a real issue for farmers right now because we've got to decide what we're planting, what our cropping is. There you go, lots going on as ever, but um, yeah, at least the weather's good, at least the crops are looking really good. So I'm this is one harvest I, I'm sort of looking forward to at the moment, but very, very much got an eye on the news and what on earth is going to happen next out of Russia and Ukraine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have, keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon.